I'm here this uh, late morning, almost morning. afternoon, uh, with uh, Pastor Terry Maris here in Del Rio uh, to do a follow-up. Last time we spoke, I think it was day eight, and it was actually at the facility where y'all are doing that processing for the legal illegals. Today would be like day 30. Oh, the bells still ring from school. <laughs> so, yeah, they're having fun, fun day today. Yeah. So, um, gosh, today's day 30. Tell me what day 30 looks like at the facility today. What's going on? Uh, I actually haven't been up there today. I haven't been up in a couple of days, but, uh, you know, they're still processing people. They're still, the numbers are... Uh, uh, 130, 150-ish, the numbers are, are pretty so well. So have stayed steady. Pretty well steady there, as far as I know, that's, that's, that's where they are. Um, you know, we've had uh, Red Crosses come in, Salvation Armies come in, we've had people come in, uh, you know, come in to help. Mm -hmm. uh, people are con donating food, etc., clothing. But it's constant, I mean, it's a constant thing. Uh, I know uh, numbers I've seen this morning on, the, on our feed that we have mm -hmm. is there were I believe it was 65 overnight overnight and they were bringing more in more were coming in this morning 14 7 da, da, da. are they still uh, primarily coming from the Rio Grande Valley or where uh, yeah, pretty much so I mean they're, they're, we've had a, we've had a, we've had good numbers coming in here also but, uh, so you're getting some directly from the Border Patrol themselves? We're getting some directly from, the, from this area, from, from Del Rio sector, from uh, Comstock. Uh, Comstock now is regularly bringing here. Really? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, like Interesting 14. that your numbers haven't grown if they're coming from, so they must be diversifying other places that they're taking people. I would, I would, I would guess that, but I'm not sure uh, on that. I mean, I would think that they're, they're yeah. you know, they're still, they, they always have been uh, yeah. taking them all up and down the border. You know. What now that uh, I guess you're about a month into this, how much of a financial impact has this had on your church? Have you even had time to look? No, we really haven't checked in detail. Uh, I know we've done sandwiches and stuff. We backed up on that. People are still contributing. What we're doing though is getting water, bottled water, in in in, in mass with that. Good. Uh, because the uh, food kitchen is there right now, and they're cook they're making meals every day. Oh, so they're cooking so, on site now. On site. They have a trailer there on site. They're making meals every day. So that's taking that off of us. Would it be the Texas Baptist or what organization? Let's see. It's the now, Texas Baptist have been there. They brought uh, in some showers, I believe. Oh, cool. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it's uh, Red Cross. Red Cross. See, the Red Cross or Salvation Army. Not okay. Uh, Red Cross probably falls more in that category yeah. on doing that. Um, Hmm, okay. Well, that's got to be really beneficial. Yes, it is. And helpful. Yes. So, are y'all having enough manpower to uh, continue, uh, you know, on well, a daily basis? That's always the biggest, really the biggest need next to the, the, the stuff itself, the materials itself, food, etc., is, is manpower, volunteer. Yeah. I know a chaplain from up in San Angelo, he and his son came down to work this week, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, to do missionary work, right? And uh, we uh, there's been a couple yeah. of groups from San Angelo and and others even uh, you know deeper on up into Texas and other areas that have wow, come. yeah. So um, when we were here last time, that y'all were already discussing potentially doing a second facility. Any more discussion happening there, or do y'all feel now that it's holding at this number? that you might just stay at one facility? I know there has been discussion. I know there has been uh, uh, interaction with the city on that. Uh, we are, uh, we actually looked at another facility, but to my knowledge that is still not being utilized because we are turning, we're turning very quickly. We're turning yeah. the people very quickly. Meaning uh, when they are released to us from, from Border Patrol, uh, our goal honestly is uh, get a no, move no within overnight, hours. Yeah. or if they do one at the most. Yeah. Now every now and then there'll be a there'll be a two nighter. I know we had one when mm -hmm. I was here before that he could just but couldn't. Most of them are uh, unless they just have no sponsor, they have no uh, 
you know, they're trying to get contact worked out or something, they're, I mean, we're, we're processing them quickly. Are they still predominantly going to New York, New Jersey, and Maine? In Houston? Uh, it, it seems that those are the areas. Uh, Amazing, that are, yeah. isn't it, that all their relatives are up there. Uh, that still just kind of boggles there, the mind. There, just there are bit. some scattered out, but, but Houston is a regular, uh -huh. uh, a regular destination uh, up on the East Coast, New York, etc. You know, number of places up there. Wow. Um, Oh, man, there was a question that just went poof, right through. Right through. Um, oh, I hate when that happens. Um, well, tell me, tell me some of, from your perspective of what all is going on down there. Any changes, any uh, people types that are different? And let me see if I can rethink of what my question was. Well, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, the, uh, our group has gotten much more organized. We've got some people in there now that are really, really organizing, uh, which has made it much easier. You know, we're not eating in the building, we're eating outside. We've got tables set up out there. Uh, so the organization aspect of it is making it much easier. But you know, still like, like again this morning, there were, there were 65 overnighters. So when you have that, if you're not organized, you're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, so it's making it easier. Uh, we have a clothing room. But, but no one can go in there and get clothing unless there's a volunteer there because it's now organized with shelves wow. organized uh -huh. because people were going in and, and not just going in and grabbing and throwing and it, yeah. it was total confusion after one person or one family would go in. So mm -hmm. now then it's locked uh, just for order's sake. Yes. It's organized. We take them in with a volunteer, help them get their clothing, lock it down. So th those kind of things are what, what we've been doing on our end here as a coalition yeah. to try to make our processing quicker, more efficient, uh, and a better and a better overall you know experience for, for them involved. too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I heard through the Del Rio news. I forget the name of the newspaper. Del Rio Herald. Herald. Yeah. Uh, that uh, at the most recent uh, county commissioners meeting, that they're uh, one of the. Uh, uh, representatives from Representative Will Hurd's office was there, and one of the councilmen was greatly concerned that more is not being done uh, as far as the border and stopping and the setting up. What are you hearing in the community? What's the what's the local chatter? Most people, uh, there you have you have the two sides as as in all situations like this. Most people. Are, are wanting this fixed. They want, they want, it, they want it taken care of, meaning the loop, the, the law's got to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, are they scared? Are some of them really well, scared with what they're seeing? There are people that are very concerned, as, as I would say, very concerned with, the, with the, uh, all those that are coming, none of them yeah. inoculated, yeah. many diseases, and that's a fact, mm -hmm. uh, that, are, that, that are being dealt with. Uh, we just had a group of, um, I think it was 14 or 15, that were processed and released from Africa, Central Africa, which if you know that situation, Ebola and a number of other things are, are, are happening still there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there are a lot of people that are very concerned. I mean, they're, uh, and they're stating it. They're, you yeah. know, they're, they are stating it. As they talk among themselves, what... Uh, are they trying to find a way that they themselves can do something about it, or do they just feel hopeless trying to communicate with the leaders? Well, there's a, there's a lot of people that are very frustrated, very upset in, in, in a place of frustration. Uh, everybody wants to have a heart for humanity. Sure. But, but people understand we cannot sustain this. Uh, it, it, this cannot be sustained for mm -hmm. a long period of time mm -hmm. for no. our nation. It can't be. No. And people or understand for Del Rio. that. Uh, people that are here, uh, that are here, you know, that have come through the process legally and are here, they want they want it stopped. They want things fixed. Uh, you know, they know it's going to affect the future of our families, the future of our nation, uh, if this is not dealt with, you know, quickly. So there's a lot of there's a lot of frustration over it. There really is. A month of working at the center. I would think initially, uh, when you first start working it, you're you're not really sure about who you're seeing, what you're seeing. Um, you go in with 
those humanitarian eyes, those compassionate pastor eyes and, and everything. Now that you've seen a month's worth of people coming through, which that's a, what, about 4,000 people probably that y'all have seen in 30 days, what is your perspective on who and what you're seeing different? Has it changed any? Not real, from my perspective, no. All it's done is, is codify, reassure, uh, solidify to me what's happening. Uh, and that most of these people that are coming uh, very honestly, uh, sure they have t tough lives, they have rough lives where they live, they're, they're uh, impoverished, etc. But most of them are coming here for the American dream. It just, it, it just personally, for me, this quantity of people, I just can't imagine suddenly going, well, let's go to America, you know, and just walking away from everything and putting themselves at the mercy of a lot of strangers to get moved that far. And most of them have got to be either uh, bust or, or train or something to get here because they still look really fit when they get here and, and not weary and worn out. Um, it just it just seems odd that suddenly, I, I guess I'm looking for what was that sudden thing that made them all want to suddenly come to the United States and that they all have relatives up north. Well, it's being broadcast. It's being broadcast in, in uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and now spread really around the world, that if you get to the southern border with a child, you have a ticket to get into this country. Yeah. It's being broadcast everywhere. It's not, this is not them just uh, happening, you know, suddenly I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to America. This is them, okay, here's a window, come here's there. how you do it, when you get there, say I'm, I'm seeking asylum, and when you do that, you will be processed. You will, you will have a ticket in. So no, this is very, this is very much uh, uh, choreographed by yes. higher Somebody. powers. Yeah, the child situation, because just like you said, the ticket is the child to get mm -hmm. in. Have you seen some that in your heart of hearts you went? Mm, not sure that they're really a family unit as they are professing to be. Um, you see, you see those that uh, there's kind of a distance between them, and you and you actually wonder and you ask, yeah. "Is this your mother? Is this your father?" Da da da. da. Uh, but they're they're either afraid to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know statistics now from Border Patrol. From from there that yep. they are releasing says one in three yep. is not a family member. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. Um, if you pick that up, if a child was to tell y'all outright, this is not my dad or my uncle or whatever, my brother. Then we, we call the border patrol. Okay. Yeah. There is so. a process uh, when we first started uh, processing the people that were released mm -hmm. to us. Uh, that was something that came up quickly, and we said, what do we do? How do we handle this? And, and when and if that happens, we call the Border Patrol. They send someone immediately or contact uh, Human Services and send someone. Awesome. So, yes. Oh, good. And do an investigation. Good, good. Yeah. Um, it, it, you still have the overnight, so you still have that room set up with all those cops and everything in there. Is there any security now of anybody watching the building or the, the, the people that are in there uh, overnight or? There's uh, different shifts with the fire department and the police department that are on site that are uh, that patrol and etc okay. but to my knowledge and I actually have not been up there at night time but to my knowledge they're not in the in the facility with them they're, they're just they're patrolling patrol. the area yes. they're just doing a yes. a drive by they have a presence there yeah they for have a safety yeah. uh, for for the community and for those that are there yeah which it, it, you know, the fire department, police department here have got to be very limited in number. Oh, sure. I mean, this is a, the your sign said 33,567 mm -hmm. or some number like that mm -hmm. of residents. So yes. 
I would think your manpower is very. Oh, um, they're being they're being yeah. stretched big time. I mean, uh, they are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know people who are in those professions, uh, and they they are they are dealing with it, and they're not they're. Uh, it's a real strain on them. I'll yeah. say that. Yeah. Um, what? Okay. You finished your first month. You're getting ready to go into your second month. Do y'all? Do you see your group making changes or uh, running the same? What do you see? What does your month number two look like in the future to you? You know, from what I understand, the process is working pretty well here. Uh, you know, with with minor tweaks all along the way, of course, but with the numbers that they have. Uh, the way we're organized, I think it's working pretty well here for receiving them, getting them fed, checking their paperwork, helping them make their contacts, bus, train, air, airlines, uh, people coming to pick them up, and then, get, and, they, and then helping them get on to their destination. So I think it's working pretty well here. How long will the resources hold out for y'all? Well, without people, without people giving, we wouldn't last a week. Uh, I mean, without so that's real. I mean, that's really the bottom line. Oh yeah, we we, yeah. we can't. The coalition can't do anything. Uh, we just formed the coalition to have a to have some order and some structure to organize. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a five hundred one c three, but uh, you know the whole purpose and the intent there is to have have the facility to receive to channel it out. Yeah, uh, and so. You know, As a protection that, for your community, too, so they're not just. Absolutely. Are you also having issues with uh, some of the vans or whatever coming in at night or whatever, and y'all aren't open or processing at that time and just dropping at the convenience store, uh, which is the bus station, also? To my knowledge right now, most, I mean, it's almost all being done where they're dropping at uh, the processing center. Okay. Uh, but some of that is still being done at nighttime. Yeah. You have some coming in from some from. I don't really want to name the. Yeah. Some, mm -hmm. uh, some of the outlying areas. Yes, that's a good way that, to put it. That are that are not able to do it in such a timely manner, mm -hmm. uh, and so they still show up. Uh, but when they do that, they have numbers to call now, yeah. and someone will come up there and meet them and and at least process them quickly to get them in for the night, where they can have wow. a meal, uh, have food, and have a cot and, and you know rest for the night. Wow. And then in the morning, early, uh, then the people, will, volunteers will be back up there and they'll begin the actual process, processing them to uh -huh. help them make their connections to try to get them to their destination. So, are, On the intake that y'all do in gathering the information, are y'all seeing any rep duplication or anything as far as like phone numbers or whatever of where they're calling? I mean, the, it just... Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I'm not aware of any, I, I know what your question is, yeah. I, I'm not aware of any uh, numbers that are re repetitively yeah. being used as contact yeah. numbers. Yeah. Uh, now I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I'm not aware of that at all. Okay. Uh, Where does that information go anyway? Because y'all are, I mean, because tongue tied. When they drop off there, those guys, from what I previously understood, really can walk off right then when they're dropped. They can. From, and, and don't have to even come in the processing center. So the reports or the info that y'all are taking, does that go somewhere? Or is that just for y'all's data? I don't have an answer for that. Just because I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> that wasn't your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure on that. Yeah. I know we. Yeah. I know we. Uh, one of the things that we do is we receive a manifest when Border Patrol drops mm -hmm. them. Every group is supposed to have a manifest. Now, every now and then, there's been a, a group or two that didn't, but they're supposed to have a manifest, which is a list of the of the you know those Too that are long. being yeah. released. Uh -huh. uh, and then we keep that and we we file that. My understanding is we just keep it for our own safety. Which is what I recommend in the very beginning that we, we've got to have a record of everybody coming yeah, through here. Because if somebody tracks with the Ebola, you or something else, you want to be able to go back through yes. the chain of who all may have come in contact yes. with that person but, for health reasons. But as you said, the truth is, the truth is, when the Border Patrol releases uh, Opens that these band individuals, door. they have been processed. They are now legal to travel any place in the United States. Which is just mind-boggling. They can. They yeah. they do not have to come in our processing center. They do not. Uh, they they do not have to leave this town. They can choose to stay and determine yeah. they're going to stay. Yeah. Uh, 
they are they are they are free to make their decisions once they've been processed by Border Patrol. Now, most of them, most of them, in fact, I'm not aware of any. I'm only aware of, of uh, a, a mother and her daughter that got here and had a contact, and the contacts changed their mind and said they would not sponsor them. And oh, a, wow. And a lady here in town, actually, who was working at our center, who is a widow, lives by herself, said, I'll take them, I'll become their sponsor until they're settled. That, that Whoa, to my wow. knowledge, that's the only yeah. two people that have stayed in, the, in, in Del Rio uh, after being received by us as a coalition. That's, and, and that's an interesting, that's interesting, wow. Because I haven't even thought about from the other side. Because, I mean, it is phenomenal that they all have this pre-planned aunt or uncle or whatever that, I mean, it just, I, I just, <laughs> anyway, it just leaves almost, me. Almost without exception. Again, yeah. there are, there are, uh, every now and then a, a family unit that does not have a contact. Do you know of any other processing center such as yourself um, in the Del Rio sector of the Border Patrol area? But well, Eagle Pass processes some also. And so it's also in the Del Rio sector? But it's a Del, but, but, but the detention facility is here. Yeah. Because from what I understand, they, on a daily basis, just what's coming this way in the Del Rio sector is, you know, two to 400 people a day that they're apprehending. And if most of yours are coming in from somewhere else, where are the Del Rio ones going? Are they, I mean, it's almost like a crisscross spaghetti of how they're well, There's, a, there's a lot going on. I, I mean, I know people that live in Acuna. There are hundreds of people in Acuna that want to cross. Yeah. I mean, hundreds. They're waiting for their moment. Yeah. I, I know people that literally live there, work there, and they're, they're, they're people sleeping on the streets over there. That's Are you directly across the border from us? Yeah. Are you seeing a change? I know you mentioned that one day there was um, 12, 15 or whatever, um, obviously Africans that had come through. Uh, are you seeing any other change in the demographics of the people that are coming through? Uh, I mean, honestly, there, we're seeing people from all over. It's still predominantly Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, but we're seeing there people. Are, we're seeing people from Africa, Cuba. Yeah, heard uh, of Cuba. Yeah. Uh, some of the, Romania, where I've been, I've ministered for many years. <laughs> uh, we've had people come through from Romania, uh, Nepal, uh, Afghanistan. There are people coming in from all over. Yeah. And that's the ones we apprehend. Yes. Which according to statistics, but Border Patrol is one in four or five. Yeah. I understand. Totally. Terry, is there anything else you want to share? Anything? What, I mean, as a pastor, and you're looking at this, and your attention has always been to, to feed your flock. And now you're, you're literally giving a portion of your time to deal with the world. How does that feel as a pastor? Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, that I think people have dealt with as long as, as, long as we've been on this globe. Uh, you have the good and the, the, good and the bad, the, the, uh, that, that which, uh, you know, you, you have to take care of what you need to take care of for your family and the church body, but we also can't neglect humanity. Yeah. And so uh, it's a juggling act, very honestly for me. Um, it's a juggling situation. Uh, you know, Michael's very involved and he's been driving and helping and, and others. And, and uh, in the church, we have volunteers that are there that, that go in uh, daily or, or multiple times a week and give hours uh, helping process yeah. and, and et cetera. So, uh, so overall, your church body has been supportive of this work. Mostly. Yeah. I've had people tell me they left church mad, et cetera, but they got over it, you know, yeah. because I, I've, been, I've been real straight in the sense of staying in the middle of the road uh, when I talk about this in church, not I'm for this or against this. I mean, I, I tell them, you know, I've told them very clearly, we've got, I think our nation's got to fix this. Yeah. We've got to fix the laws. 
We've got to make it where our, our nation is secure and that people come here legally through the processes that are available. We're all for that. Uh, but these people are here legally. Once they get here, they're here legally. Uh, then, then we have an obligation, or I, I believe, to do what we can do for our, one, for our community. We've got to protect our community. Yes. Because uh, if we suddenly have, as you said, 4,000 people that have been processed here that are on the streets in our community. What does that do to our community of 35,000? Yeah. It can't, uh, we can't handle it. No. no. And, but, but eventually, eventually, the backlash, I really believe from this, is going to become so great that those who are sitting on their hands refusing to do anything are going to have to have to act because yeah. our nation is now having to deal with it. Even as the news is saying, uh, those that are, quote, sanctuary cities, now we're saying, okay, we're going to send some of these people to your sanctuary city. And then they suddenly start hollering, no, no, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Oh, no. Yeah. But, but, but the reality is when we become inundated, when we get to a certain point, a tipping point, it's, something's got to be done. Yeah. And, um, thank name it, that happened to me again. My question just went, <laughs> it must be Friday. Um, oh, locally, what are you hearing about um, crime? Are you, are, are, is your community beginning to see an uptick in that area? Are you seeing anything in the news or newspaper or anything along that line? You know, there have been, there have been some uh, break-ins and et cetera. Uh, in our, I'm not sure how much of an increase. I know there's been some. I know some has been attributed to illegals, but not these, because these are processed and out of here. Yeah. So it's, it's not anything new in the sense that we've been dealing with illegals on the border yeah. forever. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, but it, but it, is there an uptick? or There is an uptick, but you can't identify whether they, it's just an uptick. Yeah, I, I don't have the information yeah. on that. Okay. There, I'm sure there's someone that, that knows those figures much better than, than I would know. And, <laughs> if they can keep up with it. Yeah, I, think yeah. I just... It's, but wow. I, I mean, I do know that there've been there've been break-ins, and they were they were arrested, and they were illegals. Yeah. But again, my thinking there is those weren't these that are coming in because these are processed and out of here. Yeah, they're those that have been coming across all the time anyway. I'm delighted to hear that um, y'all are being able to operate more organized and um, gotten the the groove going on how to move everything because oh, we're still kind of a little in the chaos oh, on day God. eight well, and, and when, uh, like last night you know they 65 stayed up there and there were more delivered this morning already we know uh i'm sure it's frantic it's it's organized uh, frantic chaos, chaos yes. <laughs> organized chaos yes. yeah so. wow pastor thank you so much for your time and especially thank unexpected you. impromptu you. Yes, today <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, i'm glad i gave you a break from lawn mowing and uh, but i really do appreciate your time and i appreciate your work to protect your community as well thank you for what you're doing well, i appreciate our, our you know our congregation as uh, people are, are are contributing uh and people are volunteering man hours uh, people they want it fixed uh -huh. but they understand humanity's here and we have to do what we can do. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're